So to review the DNA structure, it is a double helix that's anti-parallel, and one side goes from 3 to 5, and the other side goes from 5 to 3, if you read in the same direction. And this will always have um, a sugar phosphate backbone connected by phosphodiester bonds, and then you have a nucleotide made of phosphate, sugar, and nitrogenous bases, and each of the nucleotides is connected to the other strand by hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases. There are three bonds between C and G, and two bonds between A and T, but it's always a pyrimidine with a purine in the middle, which makes the constant diameter of two nanometers in the middle of the DNA molecule. The vertical distance is also the same because of those phosphodiester bonds at 0.34 nanometers. And then it will take 10 base pairs to complete a full twist of the DNA molecule, which will include a major groove and a minor groove between the, the, the twists. And that's pretty much how the double helix molecule looks like. It twists for stability purposes and because of vertical attractions between the DNA nitrogenous bases as well. Base pairing explains why it must be a double helix, why the width is constant, and also why it, the DNA twists. And the shape, we're not sure because we saw a picture of the X-ray diffraction molecule. And remember, the anti-parallel strands must happen in order for the base bases to pair up successfully as well. Normally the DNA is twisted to the right side. If it's twisted to the left side, it's called softball or ZDNA, and that can cause mutations due to the DNA copy process. All right? And now we have to talk about the differences between DNA and RNA. And RNA and DNA are very similar. Both are stranded molecules, as you see in the bottom. Both are long polymers made built of nucleotides. Uh, both have sugar phosphate backbones. Both have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus in their composition. Both uh, have sugar and phosphate as part of the backbone. Both have a base, a nitrogenous base, as part of their structure as well. The difference, of course, is that uh, their function. Genetic information is, both of them carry genetic information, but the DNA encodes all the genetic information in your body, while the, the RNA includes only one gene. So that's one major difference. Also, both are involved in protein synthesis. However, DNA is involved only in the sense that it has the instructions to make the protein. RNA has multiple jobs, including picking up amino acids, helping line them up in order, and carrying the message to the cytoplasm. It, the RNA also has catalysts and structural roles, although DNA, some pieces of DNA also have structural roles, namely the centromere and the telomere. Uh, the DNA has two strands, while RNA has one strand. When put that together with the fact that DNA has all the genes instead of just one gene, like an RNA, and you're going to talk about the fact that DNA has, is a lot larger, is huge, has many genes, and those genes are packed into chromosomes, which are actually many chromosomes in most eukaryotes. While RNA is a small, one gene, one strand only molecule. Uh, the sugar is different between the two of them. The sugar in DNA is deoxyribose that doesn't have an oxygen on its second carbon, as you see right there. On the, on the RNA, you do have the oxygen, and that's why it's called ribose and not deoxyribose. The DNA only has pretty much one type of DNA in terms of what it does in the body. But in RNA, you have multiple types of RNA, including the three main types, which are messenger, ribosomal, and transfer RNA. We will learn about when we do protein synthesis. DNA has adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine as their comp components. RNA has uracil, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. Uracil and thymine are very similar. Both are pyrimidines. And by the way, both RNA and DNA have pyrimidines and purines. Purines are always going to be double ringed. Pyrimidine is always uh, monoringed. However, the pyrimidine uracil is different from thymine only slightly by the lack of a methyl group up here, as you can see in a, in a corner. I'll put it all together though, both are nucleic acids very important for, for our um, life. And the structure that we describe in DNA is not necessarily the same for, for RNA, although the vertical distance is going to be the same in all of that, but all the aspects that have to do with double helixes are not going to be the same. And when we do protein synthesis, we're going to review the structure of RNA molecules in a little bit more, more of detail. All right? And I'll see you in the next video on the, of the list lecture series where we're going to be talking about how DNA copies itself or replicates.